behalf of the Socratic Club, I would like to welcome you to tonight's debate. I would like to ask you all to please respect our speakers and your fellow audience members by abstaining from conversation to the, to, during the debate. Also, please turn off your cell phones at this time. I would also ask that nobody distribute flyers or solicit audience members at tonight's Socratic debate. This is neither the time nor the place for that. The Socratic Club was founded by C.S. Lewis in 1941 at Oxford University to explore the intersections of Christianity, contemporary society, and culture. We continue this tradition in honor of his commitment to the frank and open discussion of beliefs. The OSU Socratic Club is a completely student-led organization which raises funds, advertises, organizes, and hosts debates throughout the school year. We are currently looking for passionate and dedicated students to help organize events like tonight's. We need student leaders to help organize debates for next year. If you are interested in joining the Socratic Club, please see our table in the back. For tonight's debate, we will feature a new speaking format. There are four rounds of speaking in which each speaker may present his argument and offer rebuttals to his opponent. <clears throat> the first round lasts 20 minutes, the second round 12 minutes, the third round 8 minutes, and the fourth round 5 minutes. The four rounds of speaking are then followed up by a question and answer period with the audience. Tonight's debate will focus on the existence of God. Is God the greatest fact or the greatest illusion? Of all the questions posed by philosophy, this is surely the most important. Has scientific knowledge made belief in God unnecessary and outdated? Is the universe all there is and God merely a human invention and a fantasy? Was there an uncreated being who is absolute, perfect, eternal, and personal that we call God? If there is no God, man has the potential to free himself from an illusion that no longer casts its transcendental spell. But if God exists, humans can find meaning and purpose in life and a secure foundation for ethical behavior. These issues will be addressed by the two distinguished philosophers who will offer widely diverging points of view. Let me say no more than to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker tonight is William Lane Craig. Dr. Craig is Research Professor of Philosophy at Biola University in La Mirada, California. He is known for his contributions to the philosophy of religion, philosophical theology, and historical Jesus studies. He holds a PhD in philosophy from the University of Birmingham in the UK, where he studied under the British philosopher John Hick. He also has a doctorate in theology from the University of Munich, where he studied under the German theologian Wolfhardt. Pennenberg. He's authored or edited more than 30 books and has engaged many prominent academic atheists in public dialogue and debate. Please join me in welcoming William Lane Craig. Thank you and good evening. I want to begin by thanking the Socratic Club for inviting me to participate in tonight's debate. And it's also great to see Vic Stenger again. Dr. Stenger and I had a debate on this topic several years ago, and so I know we're in for a good discussion this evening. Now, the question before us tonight is, does God exist? I'll leave it up to Vic to present the evidence against God's existence. In my opening speech, I want to sketch briefly six reasons that weigh in favor of God's existence. As a professional philosopher, I'm convinced that God makes sense of a vast range of the data of human experience, including philosophical, scientific, moral, historical, and existential considerations. Number one, then, the ontological argument. I've never shared this argument in a public debate before, uh, not because I think it's unsound, but because it's so abstract that students are either apt not to understand it or else to think it's some kind of a trick. But tonight I'm going to take a chance and share it with you. Now in order to understand this argument, you need to understand what philosophers mean by a possible world. A possible world is just a way the world might have been. 
It's a complete description of reality. The actual world is the description that is true. Other possible worlds are descriptions that are not in fact true, but might have been true. To say that something exists in some possible world is just to say there's some description of reality which includes that entity. To say that something exists in every possible world means that no matter which description of reality is true, the entity will be included in that description. Now, with that in mind, consider the ontological argument which was discovered by Anselm of Canterbury. God, Anselm observes, is the greatest being conceivable. If you could conceive of anything greater than God, then that would be God. Thus, God is the greatest conceivable being, a maximally great being. So, what would such a being be like? Well, he would be all-powerful, all-knowing, all-good, and he would exist in every logically possible world. A being which lacked any of those properties would not be maximally great. We could conceive of something greater. But what that implies is that if God's existence is even possible, then God must exist. For if a maximally great being exists in some possible world, he exists in all of them. That's part of what it means to be maximally great, to be all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-good in every logically possible world. So, if God's existence is even possible, then he exists in every logically possible world, and therefore in the actual world. We can summarize this argument as follows. Premise one, it's possible that a maximally great being, God, exists. Two, if it's possible that a maximally great being exists,